pastor said in one and a half years, first time he's like, you know, seen me. So I just remembered uh, Balaam's donkey, you know, when push come to sh shove, like even donkey has to talk. <laughs> so probably today is my day. <laughs> and I humbly stand before God as a donkey that he will give me ability to speak. I think for reference, I think it's uh, numbers where it's mentioned in chapter 22. <laughs> Help me. Praise God. A very familiar psalm. We all have read uh, familiar in the sense David's most of his psalm has uh, you know same structure if you see that he often starts with a prayer and then he pours out his heart in declaring on the situation that he goes through and he always declares in the psalm that how God has come through for him and he gives glory to God at the end, hallelujah. And this uh, psalm is also similar to that. You know, while I was preparing the psalm, I first I prayed God. I know there are many commentaries. There are many theologians who have a lot of interpretation, a lot of thoughts behind this. And I thought I'm almost 48 years old. I've uh, been in this faith for a long time. And we all have our personal experience with God in our spiritual journey where God has, you know, really uh, delivered us from difficult times. So I wanted to apply this uh, psalm I, I, as I was reading verse by verse. I wanted to recollect myself as well as some of the things I've witnessed uh, with friends or, uh, or family, how God has been in their life, how they, he has helped them to, you know, escape from uh, a very difficult situation. And, uh, and the more I read, and I thought, let me first focus on David himself. Why, why he, every time uh, he, he's in trouble, you know, his habit of going to God, God with him, not to any close friend or some other big leader to explain about his situation. And, I, I, and when I looked into it, I just realized that uh, if you re, uh, see in David's life, he was not, not an ordinary person like he were from a very young age as uh, like uh, from maybe 15 or 16 this guy has been given a very uh, you know different responsibility at his house um, we see his elder brothers uh, good family uh, probably th their father you know he wants the children to be very useful in society he has sent his older ones to the army to serve the country and and to david he has given the household uh, responsibilities where his main job was to keep the sheep of his father you know uh, as a shepherd many times he you, he would be a, like a, a messenger or like a courier between his father and his brothers because they are in the camp uh, in the army's camp so he had to go with probably with food sometime or like he had to go tell what uh, dad wants them to know about the family situation so his role is totally different but one thing we see that he has from very childhood he has established a close relationship with god somehow probably he's mostly alone all the time and he has learned to rely on god in every aspect of his life and when we see uh, his first appearance before goliath the proof is there that he was a very young boy because goliath when he comes face to face with david he addresses him as a boy you know and what does David do? David, when he's telling to Saul, he describes himself as somebody who has already fought with lion and bear. Even though he's not mentioning God about there, but when he's actually facing the giant, when he's actually going to fight the giant, he says, I come in the name of the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. That's something that he has developed from a very young age the reliance on God by seeking God's favor in the midst of trouble. That's what I, uh, and uh, one important, um, uh, um, it's a trivia question for most of you. Do you know how many Psalm uh, David has written to children? We know we have 150 Psalm, but out of which, how many of them David has written? So in all, David has written 75 psalm, which is half of the 150, like 75 of them, is from David. 
you know, we see that, um, uh, like mentioned on every psalm where, uh, that he has written, uh, from Psalm 3 to 9, from Psalm 11 to 32, Psalm 34 to 41, 51 to 65, 68 to 70, 86 to 101, 103 to 108, 110 to 122, 124 to 131, and 133, and 138 and 145. And then that makes it 73. And in New Testament, in the, uh, in the books of Acts, uh, chapter 4, 25, eight, uh, you know, Peter is telling that the, uh, the uh, Psalm 2 is actually uh, from David. Um, even though in, in the heading, when you read Psalm, probably it's not mentioned. And also uh, Psalm 95, uh, it is mentioned in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 7. Uh, it says that that Psalm is from David. So that makes it 75 of the Psalm. So somebody who has started very er early in his life to rely on God, that's why we see every experience of his life, he has written it down as a Psalm to bring glory to God. And... Uh, and whatever, when we have an experience, when, that's when, when we, if we write a song, it makes a big impact on other people's life too. Because his only aim is to proclaim the goodness of God and the mercy of God and the victory that he's enjoying because of God. And uh, as I was reading the psalm, you know, um, as I mentioned, he has learn to rely on God. That means he has distinguished himself as somebody who is different because of his, you know, his uh, hope in the Lord, his uh, reliance in God, and his uh, assurance that God will come through. And he has distinguished himself. And probably that's why, let's start reading this um, psalm. He starts with a prayer. So, in his spirit, he is realizing that there are trouble brewing. There are uh, things coming against him. So he is going to the Lord asking, Hear me, O God, as I voice my complaint. Protect my life from threat of the enemy. So even though in the psalm we will later find out he is describing about what kind of uh, threat he is facing, it is kind of invisible to him. But here, in this first word, he is very vocal about it to the Lord. And that's what we, as a children of God, need to do. At times, there are situations in our front that we are not able to see it, but we can feel in the spirit that is coming, there's a trouble brewing against us. But if we go to the Lord and be vocal about it, that's what God desires of us. You know, he, he expects us to come even though he's already aware of what is going on, but he, he loves it when we go and utter that to him because he loves to have a relationship with us. And David had that perfect relationship with God. But whenever he's in trouble, he never turns to a good friend or to a, a, a leader or somebody he thinks from a human point of view would help. Because in this psalm itself, we see that his trouble is probably within the circle that he lives. So he's not sure of anybody who would be able to help. He's straight going to God. And that's what it happens in many of our lives. We think that there are people there. We, we, we try to, you know, uh, go to people, but we come back disappointed. But David, in this psalm particularly, by 64, he has become a very mature uh, child of God, where his entire verse, if you read, even though he's describing about everything, his, his confidence is at a different level in the psalm compared to uh, if you go back to 57 and 58 where he's, you know, he's kind of telling God what you should do to the enemy. But in this psalm, he's very confident after, you know, he's telling verse by verse what they're doing to him. So let's focus on that. He's saying, hide me from the conspiracy of the wicked, from the noisy crowd of evildoers. They sharpen their tongue like sword and aim their words like deadly arrows. So what we are saying is he expects a protection from somebody and here he is suspecting that protection from the God he serves, the God he depends on. He is going and telling God, 
I have an enemy that I am not able to see. They are within my circle. You know, they are up to something. I know that it's brewing up. They are gathering other people to align with him. And now it's kind of become very clear. I see more people rising against me. God, hide me from that. You know, in, in our normal approach, when we face something, we try to make, you know, solution by ourselves, probably going back and trying to do the same thing back to your enemy, the way they are plotting against it. But David is not doing that. David knows that if he goes to God, he is able to reveal so many things in front of many people that stops from this, uh, ha from happening to him, bad things happening to him. So he's, he's describing uh, with words that he uh, had learned, because if you've seen David's life, he's been to many wars. He has seen the scenarios, what happens in a war. There are times when you're facing the enemy face to face, but there are snipers at times, you know, who shoot at him, the arrows. These are the territories where our eyes cannot see or can focus or are, are something that is hidden from us, but that attack is coming from that area. So he's using those phrases like, they sharpen their tongues like sword and their words like deadly arrows. They shoot from ambush at, at the innocent man. You know, when I was reading this, uh, my focus went to the book of Daniel, the book of Esther, Evan, and in New Testament, we see about Jesus. You know, all this familiar scenario that is happening with them. In, in Esther, uh, if you go to chapter 3, you start the things that start, uh, you know, how Haman is uh, uh, suddenly agitated because he has learned the things uh, about Mordecai and the people of Israel. And what he does is he starts scheming. He starts plotting. And we see in the book of Daniel, if you go to chapter 6, that's one of my favorite chapter. Um, let's, let's turn to, um, uh, sorry. Can we go to book of Daniel chapter 6? In the beginning, I mentioned about David, how he has distinguished himself as a child of God. If you read chapter 6, it says that it pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps to rule throughout the kingdom with three administrators over them, one of whom was Daniel. The satraps were made accountable to them so that the king might not suffer loss. Now Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrator and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. The word of God reminds us, wherever we are, in our workplace, in a public place, there's a way that you can distinguish yourself as a child of God. If you read throughout that chapter, we will learn why he, how he distinguishes. Because everybody has been given the same responsibility, but Daniel has a habit where he's not mingling and trying to please these people and trying to find favor with them, but three times in a day he will go and he will start praying. And that's why God set him apart from all the people that he was with. They all had powers, they were all with great responsibility, but Daniel was different, he distinguished himself. That was what David did from the childhood, like he distinguished himself, his reliance on God, and we see in, that in life of Daniel, that he distinguished himself. How many times, you know, I, I confess, many times, you know, we just take it very casually in many places where we should be distinguishing ourselves. And that's why probably we don't face a lot of problem like Daniel would pray. And what happens here? The fellow people who were working with him, they don't like it and then the trouble starts for Daniel, right? And just like in Psalm 64, Daniel is doing what he's used to do. He's going back to the presence of God three times, hallelujah, and praising God and, and seeking his face. And he's just praying about the matter. He has learned about this chapter, says he has learned about all the plans that has been hatched. But he's not saying anything about against it. Rather, he's taking 
in the presence of God and praying about it. Where else do we see that in New Testament? We see in the life of Jesus. We see that from the beginning of his ministry, he was constantly, you know, was, they were trying to put him in trouble. The questions were you know, put in his front in a way where they thought they can trap him in his words. You know, but Jesus has never responded in a way where we'll think that, oh, he's immediately doing something. But he always withdrew himself in the night or early hours of the day and he would talk to his father. And, and many of us, we fail to do that. That's why we get overwhelmed when the trouble comes. But David has learned and mastered about it when the trouble comes, when things are plotting against him. Uh, you know, he has developed a habit of going in the presence of God. As I mentioned in, in, in previous Psalms, some, some places where he's very vocal about what you know, God should do to his enemy. It says like you should break the teeth of their mouth and all like something like how we would. So, but here in the Psalm, later we'll read from chapter uh, verse seven, how he expects God to come through for him. And we, uh, you know, um, we talk about Jesus being betrayed, you know, uh, I think in Matthew chapter uh, 26 verse, um, uh, 36 to 56, Jesus, you know, shows us the example. On the very night he was betrayed, you know. What did he do? We read about that in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was praying to his father. He knew what is coming against him. It was very hard for him. And even in that same chapter, later we learn that even Jesus tells when Peter draws his sword and strikes one of the soldiers, he says, I could have called the angels right now. You know, uh, uh, many of them to come and save me, but that's not what the will of the Father is. That's not what I have come for. There's a mission that I'm on, and that is to save the mankind. And for that, I may have to leave, you know, give my life for that. So he just sets the example. He prays, and we can see the anguish in him while he's praying. Dear children of God, how many times we can do that in our life? You know, when this kind of trouble comes, how are we reacting? Are we like Daniel? Are we like David? Or are we like our Savior Jesus Christ? You know, enemy had many plans, many things against us. You know, but Jesus, he himself, we, let's go to um, verse 7 here. It says, but God will shoot them with arrows. Suddenly they will be struck down. See, this is what happens when God intervenes for you, when you take everything to the Lord. You know, he has a way to destroy the enemy's plan. He, it says the God will send the arrow from heaven to destroy the plans of the enemy. And that's what we need to practice in our life. Many of you are going, you know, as a young kid to college. This psalm tells you, it's inspiring you to be distinguished, you know, among a lot of fears that you'll have. And then even though they might try to bring trouble, the, the place that you are, the, the uh, things that you go through, you rely on God, just like David did, just like uh, uh, Daniel did, just like Jesus would go to his father and talk about the situation. Amen. We ought to practice that. And, and, and many times we, we forget that. We, we just take on by ourselves, and that does not help us. In verse seven it says, but God will shoot them with arrows, suddenly they will be struck down. To the children of God, enemy had plans to destroy each one of us. He had planned in many ways that we will be struck in that miry pit, you know, that we'll never escape that. And, and there was an eternal hell that we were on our way towards it. But God in his mercy sent Jesus as that arrow. And he destroyed all the plans of the enemy. He became the arrow by himself and he delivered us. And, and how many of you can lift up and praise God that he has delivered us from the plans of the evil and he has given us eternal life, the promise of eternal life. Praise God, hallelujah. And that's what um, in the Psalm, uh, you know, very confidently in verse seven, David is saying, now the, the table has turned against the, the very people who were trying to 
destroy him and God has taken care of the situation. David had, did not have to do anything. All he did like, was going and asking God to help him in that situation. We, we know that's a song that we have, um, what a friend we have in Jesus. It is a similar scenario in that song, like have we friends that forsake and despise thee, but take it to the Lord in prayer. Just like Daniel, let us develop a habit to taking everything in the Lord, whether it's been your workplace, anywhere that you're facing trouble and there's a chance that can destroy you in, in many ways, emotionally or, or physically or in any way that can set you in a different direction. Ask God intervene in, in that matter and let him shoot the arrow from heaven for you and destroy the uh, plans of the enemy. That's what this psalm is reminding us this morning. And in later words, it says in verse 9 and 10, all mankind will fear, they will proclaim the works of God and ponder what he has done. You know, when I was reading that, David has this habit, like he always tell the goodness of God the way it is. When God intervenes, when God is the one who is taking care of your problem, you know, even the people around you will see that and they will praise God or they will glorify the name of God. And uh, the perfect example of that in, in book of Esther, we see that in chapter 7, like everything that Haman planned is turned against him and he's hanged now. And in, that, in, and in the following verses, you'll see King Xerxes, he's actually declaring the greatness of God and he's telling the people of God that, that they serve a living God and he's putting up decrees where he, the king is glorifying the God. And in same thing in Daniel chapter 6, that's what, that fascinated me so much. I want to read from that. You know, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is like, why we do not go to people for help, like situation like this. When I was reading this, both in uh, Esther and in Daniel, one thing I realized is like, if you see both the kings, they have a soft corner per, for these people. They, they don't want them to be destroyed, but they're helpless. That's how the enemy plot. Like they, they put things in front of the people whom you think they will be able to help, they're not able to help. You know, they plot in such a way that there's no escape from it. Like Xerxes has to agree, yeah, there's a decree. Here, uh, King Darius has to agree, yeah, there's nothing that I'm not, I'm not able to, he likes Daniel. He has seen how good Daniel is, how faithful he is to his Lord and he does a faithful job. King Darius want to save him, but he's not able because there's a decree. An enemy tries to fra you know, frame us in that same situation where a lot of time, like a pastor or a leader or a, somebody who knows us personally is not able to deliver us from that. That's why these people have developed the habit of going to the Lord. And that's what this psalm is telling us. Our reliance cannot be on human being. In, in, in case of Jesus, we see that he, he's, uh, you know, he's standing in front of Pilate and Pilate known, knows in his heart that Jesus is innocent. But is he able to deliver? The, the, they have consu conspired and, and these people are, some of them maybe the ones who have eaten from the bread that Jesus had, you know, made it through his miracle. And probably there, some of them are there standing and accusing God. And Pilate, even after he's been told through his wife not to, do any harm to Jesus, he's not able to save. And we see Jesus also standing in the silence. He's not expecting Pilate to do any mercy there. He knows that he's on a mission to accomplish something, to bring glory to God. And that's what happens when we rely on God. God sends his arrow from heaven and he will glorify him. I just want to read the, the, uh, the verse that King Darius said in chapter six of uh, Daniel from verse um, 26. Uh, from, uh, from 25, the King Darius wrote to all the people, nation and men of every language throughout the land. A, 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 a decree coming from a king who is not a believer, but he has seen the mighty work of God. You know, he was restless to see, um, throughout the night. He went early morning looking for Daniel, whether he's dead or not. And then when he found out that, you know, the angel of the Lord had come and shut down the mouth of lion, 
he greatly rejoiced. The king who has not believed in his God in the past is now writing from verse 25. He says, the king Darius wrote to all the people, nations and men of every language throughout the land. May you prosper greatly. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. For he is the living God, for he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He, he performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from power of lion. So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and reign of Cyrus and Persia. What a mighty God we serve, hallelujah. When we pray to God, when we see the deliverance of God, it impacts the people around us. A lot of people who might be mightier than us, but when they see the hand of God working in our life, they turn and declare the glory of God and they proclaim the glory of God. That's what an awesome God we serve in our life. Hallelujah. Let, let, let us try to experience that in our life in many ways. And as I conclude, I, when I was praying, God, what is that main lesson I need to learn from this uh, Psalm 64? And I was praying and the thought came in my mind and I firmly believe the Holy Spirit was reminding me, A, we need to distinguish ourselves. Very important. If you want to see the favor of God in your life. If you want God to uh, come through for you in the time of difficult situation. And one of the important things God reminded me through this uh, Psalm 64, I was concluding when I was praying, a thought came in my mind that we serve a God, you know, for us, the, our enemies might think that they are hiding, they are trying to destroy us, and we are not able to see that. Just remember, we are serving a God who sees that enemy from heaven. Hallelujah. And he shoots down that arrow for us. Even when we are not seeing, he is able to see our enemy from us. And I want to read from uh, um, yeah, First Peter, uh, verse uh, uh, chapter one, verse three. It says, "Blessed be the God and Father for Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to His great mercy, has regenerated us into living hope through the res resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead." Hallelujah. And also, um, there's uh, one verse from Peter that I had um, written down here. I think I lost that. Um, yeah. It's First Peter chapter 3, verse 12. It's a very familiar verse. It says, For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ear are attentive to the prayer. But face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Let us all remember that as David did, as Daniel did, as the Esther would tell Mordecai to go fast and pray. Let us come before the Lord every time we are in this difficult situation because there's only Jesus who can come through for us. He has already come through us for us when we were on the path to destruction. He saved us and he's, he, le he sits in the right hand of God continuously interceding for us so that all our troubles could go away. Praise God for his great mercy in our life and, uh, and, the, and the love that he has showed in our life. May God bless you with this word.